Well, welcome again, everyone, to another broadcast from the Yadkin Valley Baptist Church in Advance, North Carolina. This is Pastor Brother Ronnie Craddock speaking. Thank you for being with us again tonight. Uh, we, uh, again, hope you've had a good week and good day, and uh, hope it'll just continue to be better tonight and uh, Lord willing in the next few days ahead that, uh, you know, before we turn around again, it'll be Sunday, and I hope you'll find your place in the house of the Lord on Sunday. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you to come and be with us at the Yadkin Valley Baptist Church in Advance, North Carolina. We'll give you a little more information at the close of the broadcast today, but we'd certainly like to have you to come and be a part of our service. Tonight we're going back to the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 5, and uh, we'll try to finish up the, the series of messages on this thought, Why is the Church Glorious? And we'll read those verses uh, over in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27, and uh, finish up this uh, third and final part uh, and try to answer that question, Why is the Church Glorious? Well, as we always do before we start in the message, let's look to the Lord in just the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to be able to share a message again tonight. And I ask dear Father that you'll take the word and use it for your honor and glory and help everyone in the sound of our voice, save the lost that may be listening, encourage your people, help and meet all the needs and requests of each and every one. And uh, Father, whatever's done, may you be glorified and honored through it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, uh, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 5 tonight again and read these three verses of Scripture. In verse 25, the Lord says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Right there is the thought right there, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, if you've been with us uh on the previous uh, two Wednesday nights, as we begin on this message, you, you know we talked about uh, the the founder and the family of God. And, and in case you're uh, listening for the first time tonight and you missed those two messages, uh, we begin with the thought that why is the church glorious? Well, because of its founder. It originated through Jesus Christ. Again, I've shared this in the other messages. Jesus told the Apostle Peter one day, he said, Peter, uh, thou art Peter. And that's a play upon the words. He's, it, it's, his name means a little rock. In other words, you could say it like this. Uh, Jesus would be saying, Peter, you mean your name means little rock, but upon me, I will build my church. Not on Peter. He didn't say he'd build it on anybody but himself. So you know, it's been kind of some misconception there that some people thought that he was going to build the church upon Peter. But no, he didn't know what he said. He said he'll build it upon himself. And he said, your name is a little stone, but on this rock, talking about himself, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So uh, we talked about that on the first broadcast on the series that he's the founder. Uh, and, you know, how that we are the body of Christ, we're the bride of Christ, we're a building of the Lord, we are his church. And then the next uh, uh, broadcast, we talked about why is the church glorious. We talked about the family. We are part of the family of God. Uh, the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 3 that the whole family uh, of God is named in heaven and in, in, in earth. Uh, you know, there's a song, there's a new name written in glory, and it's mine. When a person is saved, when they're born again, we talked about that last week, uh, they become a child of God, they're birthed into the family of God, and, uh, and forever will be a part of the family of God. And if you're unsaved, God wants you to be in his family. God sent Jesus to die for you, 
that no one should perish, no one would go to hell, but all would come to repentance and be saved and go to heaven and be a part of the family of God. So that's another reason why the church is glorious. And then tonight, I want to uh, finish up on that thought, why is the church glorious? And that is number three, because of its future, because of the church's future. I'd like for you to, if you can, turn with me to John chapter 14, and if you don't have a Bible, just listen carefully is what the Lord said here in John chapter 14 and verse 3. The Bible says, Jesus speaking here, and he says, and if I go, and by the way, he did go, he did go back to heaven, and uh, he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. So the church is glorious because the, the future of the church. Now, I realize uh, there are churches today that have um, attendance have fallen off. I know with the COVID situation and, you know, where uh, services in most churches are not yet back to a uh, regular schedule, uh, you know, and the people, some are afraid to come and, you know, and get out and, you um, you know, maybe you get to get COVID-19 or whatever, they're trying to be careful and safe. And, and I understand that a lot of churches, most churches' attendance have dropped somewhat during this uh, pandemic. Uh, but we're hopeful that uh, as, as we're seeing signs of improvement, uh, that that'll pick back up. And we hope that everyone that is afraid to go to church now, maybe before too long, uh, you'll feel comfortable as more people are being vaccinated and less cases of the COVID-19. And certainly we all want to get back to normal. But I do realize a lot of churches are down. And I also realize that a lot of churches, uh, you know, have, have even closed in the last several years. That's been, if you, if you look at it worldwide, you know, we might not know too many right off our hand, uh, but there are a lot of uh, churches have had to close the door because of lack of, attendance people uh, just quit coming and uh, that is sad but the church not the building the body of believers though does have a future you know I see and have seen churches that have you know folded and ceased to be and maybe the church building becomes a, um, a public building or a factory or a restaurant or something and you know that's 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 sad but that's just a reality but it's not the building that's going to have a future and continue on and uh, we, we want all churches that's preaching the word of god to grow and, and no churches to close the door but when it comes to the true church the body of believers those that are saved those that are the family of god Thank God the church does have a future. And the Lord says, I'm coming back for you. Now, I mentioned on the first broadcast how that the church is referred to as the Lord's body and, and, and the Lord's bride. And the bridegroom's coming. He gave us the parable of the ten virgins. And, and the first thing they said that was said to them, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. And that's uh, symbolic of, of Jesus coming for his church, the body of believers, those that are saved, because we have a future in Jesus Christ. He said here in John 14, 3 and 4 that I read to you, he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So therefore, there's a future. The Bible said there remains a rest to the people of God. There is a future uh, for this glorious church. It, it didn't end at Calvary. It, it began. It's not going to end because of a pandemic or anything with church attendance down. Most churches has nothing to do with this glorious church because we're already seated together in heavenly places and um, our names are written in heaven. And the Bible says that... Um, uh, it's reserved for you and I in heaven, 
So the church is glorious, regardless of how church attendance is, it's still a glorious church because the church of, that God is talking about here, the body of believers, does have a great future because Jesus said, I will receive you unto myself. Now, that is speaking of the rapture, and uh, and I share this at our church sometimes. I realize the word rapture is not in the Bible, and but I also say this, uh, the word Trinity is not in your Bible, but we believe in the Trinity. The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We all believe in, I, I believe we all do, I believe in the Trinity, uh, unless you're an atheist or something. But the word Trinity is not in the Bible. But I don't change it being a true saying, you know. And so the rapture is not, the word is not in the Bible, but the principle of it is. And we find that over in the book of 1 Thessalonians. Now, I'm still talking about why is the church glorious tonight. It's glorious because of its future. Because Jesus is coming back for his church. He is not the building, but the body of believers referred to as the church. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and um, verse 16, the Bible said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See, there's the future of all saved people, regardless of when they were saved, if they're alive or not, it doesn't matter. The dead in Christ, those that were saved before they died. You know, it's not, not a question of, you know, going to pray them out of purgatory. You've got to make that decision before you die. The Bible says when you die, it's like a tree. And it says, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. And Jesus said, if you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. So that's why you have to be saved. That's why you need to trust God and become a part of this church, the body of believers, by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then when you do that, you're saved, you're born again, you become part of the family of God, and therefore you're part of the glorious church. And the glorious church of God has a future and that event is uh, what we call the rapture, and it's going to rapture us out of this world. I tell them at church, I tell them at, uh, at funerals sometimes that you're wanted, dead or alive. If you're saved, you're wanted, dead or alive. If you if you pass away before this event takes place, God won't forget you. The dead in Christ will rise first. The alive in Christ will be called up to meet them in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Well, that, that's just a different message altogether. But the, what my point is, though, that this is a glorious church. This is a glorious event. Why is it a glorious church? Because one day Jesus is going to usher the church, the body of believers, the saved, the family of God. He's going to usher us into heaven and to the presence of God. Wow, what a day that'll be. Uh, Revelation has an interesting uh, three words that I'd like to share with you concerning the rapture, the future of the church. The Bible said in uh, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, now listen carefully. It said, after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven. You guess who the door is? Well, the door is Jesus Christ. Jesus has already said that he was the door. He's the way and the truth. No man comes in the Father but by him. So the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. Now the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, and 1 Corinthians 15, the trumpet is going to sound. Okay, Dead in Christ rise, alive in Christ to meet him in there. Well, he says, I heard the voice of a, as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which says, and here's the three words, Come up hither, come up hither, and I will show the uh, things which must be hereafter. So the Lord is going to 
rapture us up one day, take us out of this world. If we happen to be uh, alive at that moment, and that could be any moment, could be before I finish this message tonight. Uh, it's, it's very fast and sudden. It's intimate. It, you know, it could happen any moment. The Bible said when Jesus is going to come, when God sends him, he will not tarry. And the Bible said there in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it's in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and we'll be taken up out of this world, uh, this sin-cursed world, this evil world, um, because there is a future for the glorious church of God. We're going to leave this world. And uh, the Lord has promised, he said there in John 14 that I read, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So that's the future of the church, the glorious church. I give the, the message title I've already given to you, Why is the church glorious? It's glorious because of its founder, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's glorious because of its family. The whole family in heaven is named, the Bible said, uh, the family of God. We're born again. And a new name written in heaven. Thank God it's ours if we're saved. And the church is glorious because of its future. I'm glad the Lord says, He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And he says, I give unto them eternal life, everlasting life, and no man's able to pluck them out of my hand. What a great future. We have much to be thankful for and to praise God for. Uh, down here, there's troubles and trials and tribulations and tears and heartaches and you name it. But thank God, one day God will wipe away all tears from every eye. Won't that be a wonderful day? What a great future you and I have. You know, the people making plans for the future. But really, there's no future. There's no, nothing worth out there living for without Jesus Christ. The Bible said, if you were to gain the whole world and lost your own soul, what would it profit you? But I'm glad you could have a future and you could be a part of this glorious church tonight. You say, Brother Ronnie, I'd like to become a part. I don't know how. Well, very simple to be a part of this glorious church. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. And acknowledge that Jesus died for you on the cross. The Bible said if you believe and trust him. That if you will call upon his name. And you mean it. You don't just do it just to please somebody. But you realize that you're lost. And you want to go to heaven. And you want to be saved. It's kind of like the tax collector in the Bible. He just didn't even look up to heaven. And said God be merciful to me a sinner. And he got saved. And God will save you. If you mean it from your heart, you asked him to save you. He promised that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus also promised that all that come to him, he will in no wise cast out. So you can have a future and you can be a part of the glorious church tonight. So I'm going to pray and I want you to pray and I want you to pray from your heart that if you call on the Lord Jesus Christ and I have a true heart of repentance, and trust him and believe him and he said he would and he'd save you and you could be a part of this glorious church would you do that with me would you bow your head right now and call upon the name of the lord father we thank you for this time and privilege to share the message again tonight and i pray now blessing be upon uh, those that are listening that's unsaved you'll convict them deeply lord that they'll cry out for mercy lord and Thank God the Bible tells us we're saved by grace through faith. And that's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. So if anyone's calling on your name, help them to know that you will save them. Lord, and help them to, to, uh, to know that they'll be, now that they're saved, they'll be a part of this glorious church that does have a future. So Father, bless and help them and help others. Help Christians, Lord, that have needs tonight, burdens God. May they just cast them all before Jesus and, um, and just uh, not pick them up again, but uh, cast them down, as it were, at the foot of the cross. Bless and help all the sick, the suffering, wherever they are, the bereaved. Lord, comfort them and uh, meet every need tonight. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I appreciate you being with us tonight. 
Uh, if you have accepted the Lord as your Savior, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can uh, write to our church at uh, Yatkin Valley Baptist Church, 1324 Yatkin Valley Road, Advance, North Carolina. The zip code is 27006. We'd love to have you to come and be with us in our service on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. And then if you can't come in person, uh, you can catch us on YouTube at 11.15. Also on our church uh, uh, website, you can uh, go on the Atkin Valley Baptist Advance and click. There's a link that you can get on Facebook and watch us there uh, live as well. We'd just love for you to come and be with us, but if you can't, uh, you join us uh, on, on uh, YouTube on Sunday beginning at 11.15. Well... I uh, hope you've enjoyed the series on the thought, Why is the Church Glorious? It's glorious because of its founder, it's glorious because of its family, and it's glorious because of its future. Well, until next time, this is Brother Ronnie Craddock, pastor of Yatkin Valley Baptist Church in Advance, North Carolina. Thank you for being with us, and goodbye, and may God bless you.